Is your neck feeling saggy? Let's lift it. Grab your microcurrent, grab your gua sha tool, and grab your LED, and let's get to work. So I'm starting out with a gua sha tool. This is the Anma. Can't get it right side up, but yes, this is the Anma. And I'm going to be using a little bit of conductive gel to have some slip and glide. And this is called the Hydra Lift. I really like this one. So I'm gonna brush it on. You can do this with massage cream and stuff, but since I'm going to be doing microcurrent after, I really like to keep it gel, keep a gel on there, something light, and nothing that the current afterward is gonna have trouble penetrating, or nothing that I have to wash off after before I do microcurrent. So I'm just keeping it simple and using this as a as a slip and glide agent so here i am releasing on both sides the sternocleidomastoid which gets shortened on a lot of people and now i'm deciding to do two pressure points around my mouth because i am a purser like crazy now here is what you can use if you don't have a, a gua sha tool you can just use your fingers here to release this point on your mouth it's very relaxing I'm actually kind of pressing too hard with my fingers. You don't need to use this much pressure, but very relaxing. So now I am just going to apply a little bit more slip and glide where I didn't put it. And this releases the corners of the mouth. And so if you take this gua sha tool and you knew you move it in sort of a, a star formation, almost like if you're microneedling, you know, you do, the, you do the, all the different directions. So here I'm working on the depressors, those depressing depressors that pull the corner of the mouth down. And almost, always, I'm almost getting a little bit of the rosorius muscle, which is a smile muscle. And this is sort of where people get those uh, parentheses and accordions sometimes. So this helps release a lot of uh, stuck fascia that sort of bunches up every time we smile. So I'm just trying to cover a every angle here and getting those parentheses to go away. I'm returning to the sternocleidomastoid because these get shortened on everybody and they'll sort of pull everything down even the front of the neck if these are uh, really contracted, which they are in, in a great majority of my clients. So I'm applying some pressure here. You do want a little bit of redness, uh, not at first, but later on, sure. Okay, so now I'm reapplying some of the conductive gel and mask. This is actually a hydrating mask as well. I'm just pointing out some of that erythema, the redness. So I grab my microcurrent device. This is called the Clairblend Mini. And I like this device. It's very simple to learn how to use. When you're working the neck, you wanna make sure you get these sweeping movements, these lateral movements. These tend to work on most necks. Now, if you have a long skinny neck with neck banding, you'd wanna do vertical moves as well. But for my neck anatomy, these ten, these these horizontal moves tend to work best on me, and so I'm I am actually going with the beep here, which this device beeps every ten seconds, and it's a nice little timing mechanism. Here is one of the vertical moves. If you need to do this, you know, if you have a long skinny neck with wrinkles then this would definitely be one of the moves you want to do just to sort of cover the whole area. If I do this move on my own neck too often, I start my neck actually looks heavier because that muscle in the front there, that platysma, that is notorious for, for creating that waddle look underneath the chin, it's basically a sheath. It is a, a sheet-like muscle that tends to collapse in the front. And so this wrapping around move does better on some necks than those vertical moves. So vertical moves are great if you have a skinny neck with lots of um, neck bands or necklace lines, they call them. But if you have a heavier, fuller neck like I do, you definitely wanna do this wrap around method. 
and I go right around to the side. I go in front of the ear. I go behind the ear and I really get a good purchase of that platysma muscle and wrap it back up and wrap it back around. So we're just finishing up here. I'm going to show you a little profile view. So looking a little more taut on one side. Yep. So let's do the other side. We will do the same movements. Once again, if you have a long skinny neck with banding, you want to do vertical moves as well. When you wait for the 10 seconds with this device, it does test your patience. So it's kind of, it's kind of more fun to do it in front of the TV or if you're reading a book or something where you can multitask because it gets, it, it can be a longer treatment, but you know, you think about a workout and how long that takes. So we're working directly working these muscles and this device I really like because it randomizes the frequencies that it uses, which means that that current is hitting the, the skin and the muscle at all these different levels, like very light to down at the muscular level and back up again. And so it's just randomized. So it's never the same workout for the muscles. And this thing weighs about as much as a deck of cards does. And it's really easy to throw in your, you know, in your, in your suitcase and travel with if we ever get to do that again. <laughs> And it's just, it's just easy. It's one of the easiest devices to learn. I'm just doing some lateral moves here on the jawline. This is actually the only move in the manual that you hold it sideways, but, or hold it vertically, but go sideways. Cause you're usually trying to go with the grain of the muscle to shorten the muscle. But here we're just trying to get that, that ridge to pop out a little bit and there is something to this move I quite like it I, I kind of scoffed at it when I saw it in, in the instructions but then I did it and I was like oh hey this looks this is nice so one thing we want to think about when we're trying to lift a waddle or the, the little bit of skin that accumulates underneath the chin we need we need to lift the area above it and so these, this is a vector, and I talk about vectors in many videos, but it's a line that lifts or cuts through a common area of sag. And so when you lift right up through the jowl area here and work this area, it's going to lift the area underneath the chin. And I remember one time I was doing another modality called fibroblast, and a friend of mine, an esthetician, was complaining that she had had her neck done many times, but that she wasn't getting the little waddle underneath her chin to lift. And so I did her chin and I did this area and voila, it lifted. So here we are, sorry about the bright light. Here we are going to do some LED. And this, once again, you'll wanna be watching TV because this is a little boring. So many people ask me the order in which to do microcurrent and LED. And the truth is, I don't, I, I really like to end with microcurrent, but I don't see LED as something that re-relaxes the muscles. So in this treatment, you'll notice we worked out facial tension. We opened up blood supply. We opened up, you know, we got the muscles warmed up. Then we used microcurrent and now I'm using LED and in a perfect world, I guess I would have used LED first to warm up those muscles further, but it doesn't really matter with LED. It's kind of one and the same. It, like I said, it will not re-relax the muscles, but we do always want to end with microcurrent because it does help maintain the lift that we get. We don't want to go back in with the Onma or with the Gua Sha tool after we've done microcurrent because that could relax those retrained muscles and that's not what we want to do. So an LED treatment, it's very simple. It's, you know, but we just want to saturate the area with the LED. LED is great for speeding cellular turnover and healing skin. It's really nice on fine lines and wrinkles and uh, shrinking the appearance of large pores. It does wonderful job on shrinking up. Well, I don't know if you can shrink pores, but it makes pores look so refined, just beautiful. 
So if you have thyroid issues, you would want to avoid the neck area, or you can actually pull the light, maybe the LED, maybe an inch away from your neck if you need to. But you can certainly go up along the jawline in the front and the center, and then the sides of your neck with really no issues, usually with thyroid stuff. So always ask your doctor if you are concerned, but I have... <laughs> actually severe hypothyroid didn't even know that but I went and I talked to my my doctor well I kind of knew it but I didn't know I had, had gotten so bad and she said I have never seen this low <laughs> of a thyroid I'm like well that's great so that I'm on the men with that and taking some medication so at the end you know you can give your hands some love always give your hands some love Why not? they will show our age as well so just give my hands a little bit of tr uh, LED here So, so many people ask me, do I wash this mask off or do I just leave it on and go to bed? I take it off with a warm, wet towel, which is what I'm doing here. Really get that off. And then you want to put on your favorite moisturizer. And this is just uh, the, the Cavi, which is the part of the, the facial filling, part of the facial filling line from Korea. And it's just very thick and rich and has the polylactic acid in it that helps build up in the follicles and give us some nice volume. But I'm using it here because it's very, very nourishing. But you can use whatever uh, nighttime moisturizer you love or you can put on your SPF, moisturizer SPF if you're going out and it's during the daytime. So here I'm just going to do a little lymph drainage, a little bit of extra lymph drainage I like to do. And so there you can see a nice, taut, firm-ish neck. <laughs> That's as good as it gets with my anatomy. But thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye now.